Right, we're off. See how this does. View a bit, you know, and then you know, a different tripod. Have a bit of a look at that. It's a tripod. Right, we've got something in 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 here today. Keep moving you around, but you keep focusing on it. Yeah, tracking you. Not bad. Right. Okay, I'm. I'm Feeling about with the uh, oh, we'll track that instead then. Um, you can see I don't know if you can see me. Right, welcome to lockdown workshop. Um, we're in the uh, the posh building again, the old workshop. Um, we've got this in. It's been sat in here just over a week now. Uh, and had time to do it. We've had a lot on. It's already had an M check. Uh, the chain is just on the wear limiter and that needs uh, that needs popping out, it's a weird one. Uh, so it's probably not got a split link, I'm guessing. Because I've just spotted the actual link link. There. I'll keep going around, have a look, see if there's a split link on it. So I've got to get the chain off. Um, it came in initially to have its tyres done. Um, swapped over, they are tubeless, so great, I'm going to get covered in goo. Um, so I'll probably need to go up to the other workshop anyway to inflate them if I've got to use the, uh, uh, the compressor to blast them on. We'll see how lucky or unlucky we are with those. Um, mountain bike tires are generally harder, we'll pop that one out. Because I think that is a sacrificial link. Um, but I have spotted something else that's wrong. The bearing's gone in that wheel. There's quite a lot of play. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not entirely sure what it's tracking there, but I press the tracking button. Problem is, when I move the camera, it keeps trying to follow the same image. Um, probably because I've got tracking turned on. But let's see if we can see this. Try not to move the frame, but there's at least a millimetre of play each side, so two millimetres all in all. I know you can't see, you might be able to see it actually, but it's the bearing on that side that's gone. The bearing on this side feels all right. There's also, there's some crunchiness going on down there, but it, I'm starting to wonder now whether it's that bearing, but I could certainly feel something when I was turning the the crank over so it could be that that bearing in there has gone as well but I won't know until I've got the chain off and I can I can spin that round so I think first thing we do is get the chain off then we'll get the wheels off I've got to clean the wheels as well before I take the tyres off so we need to do that uh, and like I said we might have to retire to the other workshop uh, I am on the just for reference I'm on the Insta360 with the 360 lens on which is why I can do some things like that I don't know if you'll see that but there we go um, and then, I don't know what that lock button does. What does that do? Screen lock. Please stay in the app and keep your screen on during recording. To retrieve applicant. All oh, right. I don't know what that means. Oh, I've locked the screen. Ah, I've unlocked the screen. Anyway, right. Pissing about with the application there. You don't need to know that. Um, I thought you could zoom in, but it won't let me. Hey ho. Right. Um, let's get that. Yeah. 
I've got hair properly showing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Somewhere safe. Hang your toes over the wall. Mildly mucky. It's a little. It's not crazy. Sounds a little angry. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, it's a pressing bearing as well, so I probably haven't got any anything for that one. Let's get this thing off. There's some of the clutch off on that as well. That should mean that that moves. Yep. Yeah. So just in case you don't know, these have a clutch on. So like the mountain bike ones, you flick the clutch up. Very difficult to move that. And you flick it off, it's very easy to move that. So the idea is that when you're really thumping down on undulating ground, the chain's not constantly smashing against the frame. Um, so we'll just shove that in there and we'll just go that way with it. And we will also stick a Set of uh, just in case I catch a levers, we don't end up pushing these together. I do need to check the brake pad, they look fine. There's a bit of life left in them, they'll last another year or so. Um, now this is like the guidance, should we get, get that out? You use the, the one tool and use it on the front and the back. It, it, it stays on by either a magnet or some kind of rubber thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. They ain't coming out. Get a big break of arms. Put that out. I've got something to show you as well. Um, as I've got them off, it's worth giving them a run with your hands. Just feel a little bit growly as well, that one, but there's no play in it. Sometimes you get a bit of extra noise because the uh, thing acts like a soundboard for them. I've got another one of Jerry's wheels, so I've got this uh, soundpad wheel similar to the Zonda. Um, Quick product review, and then we've got all the stickers off it yet. We've been spending money, we've bought another park tool. Um, my trusty pump is getting a bit knackered. When you're pushing down on it, you can feel it's, it's all mullered all the way down the tube. It's either corroded on the shaft or in the tube itself. Uh, the clamp itself's getting harder and harder to secure. So we've got one of these park tool ones. Quite a clever little kit piece of kit, actually. There's some kind of valve in there and I've not worked out how it works, but it doesn't matter which one of those you use, as long as you've got one of them blocked off, it diverts to the one you've got blocked off. It's quite a simple clipping mechanism, so put it on, wang that up, and then depending on which one of those you're in, it forces air down there. No idea how it knows, because you'd think it'd come out of the other one. It's got a really weird looking gauge thing, it almost looks like it's not a gauge at all. So we'll, we'll give that a whirl later on. Nice piece of kit. Trying to buy, pick up park tools whenever I can cheap. Because everything's tending to be, people are trying to shed the stock at the moment. So if they've got tons of them, they are 
selling them off. I think I got it off Amazon, and I think it was about 40 quid. I don't think I'd ever paid for it to the point. So this is the old one I had, it's an Airwave, Airwave, which I think was Wiggles' own brand. Uh, I've had it a good 10 years, and it, it makes a bit of a noise going up and down there. Um, that nut thing there connects through to that, and it keeps coming unscrewed. There's a gap there, it's, it seems to be always leaking air when I'm trying to do it up. That keeps coming undone as well. Um, so I'm semi-retiring, it still works, it's just not as reliable as I would like it. Right then, so shh, this wheel. Shall we have a look at it? See if we can work out what's wrong with it. Oh god, that sounds angry. Yeah, it's definitely that side. What about this one? The trouble is I can't work out whether it's so if I hold that one up. Definitely that side. So we've got to work out whether I can, uh, whether I've got a bearing for that. So I think we might be retiring to the uh, the other workshop with these wheels now then to go and put the tyres on and to see if we can fix that. So um, I think next time you see me, we'll be up at the other workshop. Where have you knocked off? See how long this lasts. Right, we're back in the uh, the main workshop now. Uh, I just need to go and grab grab a wheel, any wheel. Um, we'll sort out. We'll have a look and see. Sort out the bearings first. Uh, I've got the pots washer on because uh, I think I'll need to stick the. I need to get the um, cassette off. I've got the cassette to get off on another wheel as well that Jenny wants me to have a look at. That she. She's got a tubeless tire on a non-tubeless rim and it's not been seating right uh, and she needs to get it off so I'm going to see if I can sort that out and get it off for her and then uh, probably stick a new tire in a tube on. I might have some spare because I've got another job I need to do some of my stuff. These are mine, and that's a big hole I've got in the arm. Compact wheel, those two are mine, they're resonda. These are the keys. Carmichin. Uh, it's got a 1326, I believe, on it. Count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. That's quite a, uh, that's quite a compact gear setup. Um, so I think she's wanted to go for a 32, and I've said I might be able to give her a longer bottom gear. Depends on the, on the bike, really. I could do getting the bike to see if that works. Um, we're going to swap the tyre out on this one. The bearing's okay on that one. There's no play in it. It just kind of looks a bit grumbly, but we'll, we'll leave that. Um, these are mine. These are tubeless wheels. Um, and I've got some tubeless tyres to go on there, so we might be doing a how do you convert your tyres, your wheels to tubeless video. Keep posted. Well, these are the kit outside, hopefully they'll not get stolen. Right, this is one we've got to look at, so I think we're going to have to get that off to get the, uh, to get the through axle out. So the first job, get that off. Shift this out of the way. There are the tyres that are going on. Wheel's not buckled. Probably don't need you, so I can move you out of the way and try and get a bit of space here. Uh, now then, what out of this can we save? I don't think there was anything we could save out of that. Uh, possibly that. 
and that was mullet. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and I think that was that didn't even turn. That lot can go in the bin. Any sense of this Not composting down on its own. Shut the flaps. See where we are. Blink. Get that off. Spin the toolbox now. Let it land if nobody knows. What? Everybody know where it's going to land. Yeah. That one. And a chain whip. Covers with this chain whip, it's uh, I think it's an eight or a nine speed. I could do it flopping it. Uh, in the chain, but then I won't be able to use it on another bike because I need to stick a nine speed on it. Doesn't actually say what size it is. Top quality Chinese, and I've got a better one. I've got a Planet X one that came in a job swift kit. Right, I don't know what this is. I'm assuming, oh, it's got, it's got a brake bar shift in here. Actually, looks fairly clean, but it's just got a big lump of poo. Right, have we got a cartridge catcher? One cartridge catcher. Uh, we'll go on there. And that one. That's that one. Now this works, you see me do it a fair few times. So there we go. And that goes in there. No. I stick it upside down and chuck it over there. When that warms up, we'll chuck it in there and give it some zing zing zing. Right, that feels okay. Definitely some crap in there we need to get rid of. I'm just looking for. Sometimes I'm looking for how to get into these. Sometimes they have a they have a flat spot that you can put a spanner on. Sometimes they have a big Allen key on the inside. Sometimes they just pull. Right, I think I have to get that one off as well. Uh, fortunately, they use the same tool. Very unlike. Yeah. Also, they tell you whether it's a left or right thread on these. So that can go in the box. Might be a bit of crap in that one as well. Now I'm going to play the I am absolutely flummoxed is it, as to how you get these out. Look at these pull off. Sometimes these, these things pull off. And I've got Definitely <sighs> Oops, 
So we've just had a text message back. Better get this, sorry. Right, sorry, I've just been prattling around and you haven't got it on. So we did get that off. I can't remember if you saw that, it was just a cap with some muck off it. Um, there's no retaining clip on the, on this side that I can see. I've, I've tried digging in there. I can't see anything. It looks it looks pretty clean. There's a bit of tissue. See if we can just make confirm that. If there's nothing hiding in the muck. No, I can see the edge of the bearing. So that bearing has got to come out that way. I can't see anything that comes off here. Equally, I can't see how you would get that free hub off without getting that off, and I can't get this off. Um, it, it's it's wobbling, but then everything's just been wobbling. And I have tried putting the pick under it and pulling on it, and that didn't want to play either. Actually, that might have dislodged it. And it's definitely rocking about on the shaft, so it does look like it is a cover like the other one, just that it's not. Really can't get it off. I could try pull that inside there and pull it out, but I really can't be asked to do that. It's actually quite close to coming off. If it, if this does come off, it's got to come off really. I can't see how. When I said that though, it looks like there's another washer that's been pressed into this. So we're, we're, pull it, we're trying to pull that out as well, unless that sits over the top of it. I think that sits out. I don't think that either sits inside it or over the top of it. Just doesn't want to come out. You see, it's rocking. End up launching this across the. <sighs> if I can knock it out from the other side, I can't get that through. Uh, that's enough, quite. I think that can do it. No, that definitely won't do it. Yeah, I think there's nothing for it. We're going to have to put a puller on it. Damn. Right, where's my puller? Sounds nice and heavy. I don't think it is. I think this is the this is the finger puller. Yeah. Let me get, get this set. Yay! Then we need to get the super puller on it. It just all that does is that goes inside the fingers expand out. It's not that it's not a 
an expensive tool that. This is a rubber seal I've just dropped. Ah, to find that. Why don't you tell me to just drop straight on on the wheel? Actually, I don't know where that goes. Thought it came out of that hole there, but. Uh, slightly mud. That's going to be a pig to get in if that's where it lives. No! no I guess I'm not wanting. No, there is one in this one because this is the one it fell out of. Come on, Trevor, Trevor. That's an irritating twat. Come on, Trevor, in you go. Hold on. Right, go and touch that again. Right. So we should be able to drive these bearings out now. The only thing I'm... Oh, there we go. Right, so we can check the pores on that as well now. And give that a clean up. Right, they look okay. Probably won't clean enough and greasing. We'll uh, we'll chuck that in the, uh, the parts washer too. Yes, I know I'm stacking them up on top of there. Just check the shaft. The shaft looks okay. A little mucky. There's a bearing in there. I can't tell if that's mullered or not, but the one on the outside is definitely mullered. That one feels all right. Uh, we've got a bearing in there. That feels okay. It's a little bit grungy. That's okay too. I can feel them. They're not brilliant, but they're not they're not massive amounts of play. That one's got a lot of play on it. If I pin that bearing with my finger there, I can't move that. If I ping this one, I can still move that. But that bearing's okay. So the only thing we've got to do is drive this out that way to knock that bearing out. So, there we go. Easy as that. I wish they were all that easy. So that's the bearing we've got to find. I can feel it. It's not not the best bearing in the world, but I would say personally, I believe that. I think somebody's had a go at fixing this before, but judging by the amount of grease around there, it wouldn't surprise me as well if that's not been run over. So we'll uh, again just move that out of the way. Leave the really greasy stuff in there. Right, so let's have a look at the state of this bearing. See if we can work out what it is. And whether I've got any. Affect your ride. Zero. Oh God, that's horrible. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much mullered. Right then, let's have a look in the bearings box. See if we've got anything that looks remotely similar. Uh, uh, 
looks a bit wider than what we normally deal with. So, no, 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 that's bottom bracket. Uh, oh, no, then. No. Possibly. Oh, looking positive. Right, we have got a uh, we've got a match. Six nine oh three. Six nine oh three. Bingo bango. Boom. We've got one. Right. Question is, is that a six nine oh three as well? No, that's not. Don't know what that is. We need to give that a clean. So that's going in there as well. We need to get the bearings out of that one. So we need two of these. What else have we got? What have we got here? Because these might fit in there, to be honest, because I think I bought these for a free wheel, a free hub. Right. They may go in there. We'd need to pull them out. They do look very, very similar, but I'd need to knock them out, and I'm not sure I want to do that yet. But what we can do is that fits over the top of that one, so that's that one. It does that one. No, that one sits on that. Yeah. So I suspect that one is that one. So we've got another one with a wider centre. So we're going to have to be careful with these. I don't want to knock any bearings out that I haven't got replacements for. Right, what's this one? This one might. Uh -huh. Let's have a look. Depends how thick that one is. I think that is the replacement for that one. I'm looking at it, yes. So we might have a full set of bearings for this. So we might be knocking those out as well and we'll just do the whole thing. I mean, that one feels okay. Now, they feel okay. I'm going to leave them. I have got bearings for them. Um, what I do need to do is just check that the other one on here is the same. I think it will be. Is it a 6903? Can't see, can't read it. Can you read that? 6903. So I, I propose we knock that one out as well. I can feel it. We might as well knock it out. We're in here anyway. Um, just going to batter it out with this. Yeah. Um, nope. It really just needs to be this one. No, nope, we're going to have to go to Hobble Fog. Trouble is, it's not just in between two sizes. Unless that's the wrong. Don't know. We'll give it a whack with this anyway, and then we'll have a look, see if we've got the sizes the wrong way around. Sizes the wrong way around. No, I don't think we have. I think it just needs more twiddling. Bear with me while I get this. Start recording. My fingers. God, there's only one, isn't there? That's why I took it straight through the camera.
I get another wheel that was like this coming. There we go. Normally one one hard smack is a couple of hard smacks are better than lots of little smacks. Right, so we've got them out. Let's uh, let's just see how we do the do 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 do. Right, and Bleeding awkward. Mm. Yeah, I'm back in there. Right. Oh, I've done with these now. That's the temperature, 25. Right. I think he's in Tools away, not used. Right, bits there, bearings there. Let's, let's drag out the new bearings. Right. Is it these? No. Is it these? Yes. Six nine oh three. So we want two of them. Two to six nine oh threes, and they are five pounds each. That's a tenner for the bearings, Jerry. And then we've got some bearings that will fit in the free hub if we decide the free hub's not a happy bunny to. But the only downside to the free hub is I could do with putting it in the parts washer and I don't want to put it in the parts washer with. Right. I might just have to do a... That I can rebuild. I just feel all right. That no, I'd leave that. I think what I'm going to do is just give that a uh, just give that a blast out. And then we'll see where we go with that. Just the poor. Lose a pour. They're quite good these because you can actually buy additional pours and put more pours in them if you want. Um, yeah, I had a little bit of a pain up the top though because you have to press. You have to remember to press the spring down before you try and shove them in. But other than that, they're quite good. But you can see it's a little bit sticky that, and you don't want that. That's not good. Yeah, there's too much grease on there, or well, the grease is uh, dirty. So we'll give that a blast out with some uh, uh, car cleaner. Or well, actually, but a WD-40 is probably a better bet for this. That way, it's oil. And I'm not going to strip any of the, the juice out of the bearings. I will still may, will need to grease these up again, but we'll make sure that the grease only goes where it's supposed to go. Yeah, they're not they're not as sticky now. You can go and live in there. Uh, chuck that in there for a couple of minutes. Uh, sorry, you're going to have to live with the noise. So if I could have knocked the bearings out of this one, I've decided to uh, stick new bearings in. We could have just dropped it all in and put it through the ultrasonic. But I'm not sure it needs it really, we're just going to make sure we get plenty of um, the right sort of grease in there. I, I suspect it's been re-greased with the wrong grease. 
So let's uh, let's get these back in the wheel. Uh, the best way I found to do this is to put one in first. Um, given that this was the hardest one, I think we will we'll do that first. I do want to clean that out. Looks like some crap in there. Put a little bit of oil in it. Um, I should have a lot of oil found somewhere. Should have a little oil found somewhere. I think I've lost my little oil can. That's the Treating myself to a proper little oil can, but I've no idea what it is. I'll be honest, I can't remember seeing it um, since we moved up here. So, um, let me just move all this lot out of the way before I uh, start knocking bits all over. Clear the decks! Right, knack of bearings, put them out of the way. What have we got on the way? Down for mineral oil, and that. I've got this. It's life engineering oil, it's what, you, what I use on my uh, nail guns. Now, what you need to do is check your edges because some of them have a bit more beveled edge than others. And that's the side you insert. So we'll, uh, like I said, we'll go with this one first, and we'll drive it in. I could use the bearing um, things to put them in, but um, to be honest, uh, I'm better off doing it with one of these. Just getting something that's almost the same size. Now this one was pretty flush. We can use anything we like really. Not that one's close, so we'll go with that one. Um, I'm just going to put a bit of welly behind it. This is probably not the best thing, but I haven't got something in between. Sounds jumping up and down. It's going now. You'll hear a change in tone when it's nearly there. I think we've already heard it. Just check it feels so it's even all the way round. So the reason you always knock down on the outer rim is if you knock down on the inner rim, you're actually damaging your bearing because that middle piece is floating on the bearings and you're driving down that the race onto the bearing. Right, most important bit, because this will absolutely cripple you, this bit, do not forget to put it in now. A bit of grease on it, just help it go through. Right. Now we might have to uh, fit this up on something. Do with a deep, uh, deep socket. That will probably do. Yep, perfect. Uh, 
Do not go hunting that way. That's good. Something a bit bigger. Now be better. I want to make sure it goes past this and actually rests on the the outer edge. That's better. So we've got to do the same thing with this now. A little bit of grease on it. That one just wants to play. Again, we're listening to a changing sound. Come on. Just went a little bit too far that one. I think we've got it. I'm just going to check it. Oops. Six. No. Right, that's a better one. So I'm just starting to catch the, the, the top of the threads. Um, stick that long one back in again. Make sure it's roughly in the middle. That's better, it's gone straight in. Perfect. Right then. That's it, we're in. Put these back on. Oh, that's like buffer now. Stick this back on. Threads were good, thank God. Uh, 40 newton meters. That's the standard cut and tight. Forty newton meters. There we go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I don't like that that's not ratcheting. I think I'm going to take that off and clean it. You can get it off. There we go. I don't like that 
Oh, we've left a pool behind as well. Yeah. I think there's a lot of debris and shit in there that we're going to need to clean out. So let's get these. Let's see what I'm up to here. We're going to take the springs out. Just make sure we know which way up they go. That's one spring. That's two springs. Another pour. And another spring. Right then, so we're going to give that a really good clean over. I'm going to give this a really good clean over too, because I think that that's full of crap and that's why it's not bracketing very well. So bear with me. Carb, carb cleaner. Right, we've got to be careful here because I don't want to get this on the bearing. Not too much on the bearings. Right, get a little uh, brushy washy do there. That should be. Should be on the there. There we go. Toothbrush will do. Seals on the uh, they are a sealed bearing, so the seal should be okay to stop this from getting through to the grease that's in the bearing. Yeah, they, they certainly look a lot cleaner now. Yeah, I think I think it's just the grease that was on it was that was underneath was just shit, <laughs> basically. I'm tempted not to put any grease on it, just oil them. I've heard a few schools of thought about what these are supposed to be like and how you're supposed to treat them. Well, there is a little bit of a rubber seal around that, it's just that's possibly mullard. Right, let's clean these pores up and start reassembling. I know the springs do wear out after a while, they get compressed. Good thing about this is that I can I can pick another slot, slot not that I can work out which one they uh, they just come out of. Right, need a little flat there, I need a screwdriver or something for this. I'm just looking to push that down so I can get the pour over the top of it. There we go. Please don't drop any of these, especially the little springs. And I'm sure I can get, sure I can probably get them. as well just put a bit more tension back in them like i said they do get compressed after a while and if they get full of muck the muck squashes them down even further these these are my favorite ones but i don't like the ones that have got that spring ring on them so let's take that one out and remove it nearly pinged it From side by side. Like I said, with these you can actually you can get an up you can you potentially have more expensive versions of these that have got that have uh, got more pores. I think they call them pores. Why can't I get it in the hole? It's not usually a problem. Steady. Ah, 
and just pull it back out of the hole again. You can't see any of this that I'm doing, can you? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's fiddly. It's all you need to know. Right. So, there's a little tiny hole there with a spring in it. And when you press that spring down into the hole, you can slide the pour in. And they are feeling a lot better now. They're quite clever these as well because it's micro indexed around the edge of the thing and there's there's two surfaces they can catch on so they can catch on the shoulder or they can catch on the the, the tip of the paw we're back right so I've reassembled that. It's all nice and clean now. We'll just uh, stick it on here. Into, there's a collar inside here that keeps the two bearings spaced at the right distance apart. So I'm just going to tease that over and then at some point it should let me engage this. There we go. That's better. That sounds much, 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 much better now. A bit of grease on there, just to help this over. Right, so after all that, we've fixed that now. Just got to clean that. That one. So it's just normal brake cleaner that. I think I'm even using the same squirty thing that Ed Shiner uses. Amazon special, I'll tell you that now. You don't have posh stuff to Z. Right. Just chuck that down there while we uh, see where the soup's been cooking. Uh, it's not super clean, but it's not bad. Not done a bad job of it. A little bit more. This will actually help dry it because the uh, the stuff when it evaporates will take the uh, take the crap with it. Not not dissimilar to what I do when I'm cleaning the bikes anyway. Disc rotor out of the grease. Right, this is a bit, I don't know whether this is a 12 speed. So the Rapid Drive 2020 something or other. So I, I think that, uh, that thing I've got there has come off and it does something else. Right, that's the big fat one. That one. Find out in a minute because if it doesn't fit, I'll have to take it back off and put the uh, spacer on. Because it was a 12 speed wheel. I think that's fine. I don't know where that spacer came from. Who knows? There's my magic tool. Please don't spit it all on the floor. Same thing as normal, twist it until you fill the thread drop in and then do it up. Right. <laughs> then we'll 
can we get that off? So that spacer did come off here. This is a 12 speed hub. There you go. Learn something new every day. That one. To be honest, I didn't think it was the right age for a 12 speed. Which is why I did start to doubt myself that that piece could have possibly fallen off. Yeah, but we go to this. Should have known with it having a big index in it. Because I don't have any with big indexes in. Right, we'll try that again. Keep the fat one on. Come on, don't be awkward. We try that. that one. I think that's in. Right, just to check. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Right then. There we go, jobs are good then. Yeah, the bearing in there is that it's grumbly, but it's not it's not warm. So maybe in a year's so time that'll need doing as well, but I think we're fine now. Trouble is now the wheel the wheel sounds shit because it's running through that one as well but it, you heard it before it sounded great right then let's uh, let's clear up a bit of space um what i will do while i'm here so i'll just whip this one off and get it in the uh, get it in the parts bucket for a, for a bit of a clean up too It's not playing ball. It's not going in. Well, I never, I've never had that happen before. I don't even know what's stopping it. I'll try and. Uh, send it in a bit. I don't know what's causing that, I've never had that happen before. It's not going all the way down. I mean this is a really good quality tool. I've had it, I've had it for ages. I've never had a one where I've not been able to get them in before. There we go. I wonder if it was partly damaged and it just wasn't sitting in there. Turn that in a minute because it's coming off. I'm gonna have to knock it off as well. 
Yeah, it's a cam pack. It's, uh, you know, it's still not gone all the way through. It's almost like it's a weird size. Strange. Pointless me trying to uh, sort that out because that's a uh, it's a Campagnolo one. I'll just chuck that in there. Turn her off. Turn her back on again. Should just come off. There we go. And um, this is where I start getting absolutely covered in shit. And get it off the other side of the rim. That's off now. Might be able to get this off with my hands. There's a crap ton of liquid in there. This is where I wanted to do this down down at the house. Because then I could wash it all out. Put that up there. Right, we've got to clean the rims. So you've got to make sure there's no contaminants in there and you can see all the way around there there is mud so i suspect at some point this has come off out in the wild so let's just get the majority of the liquid off first and then we will 
we'll go around with a brush and some cleaning stuff and get it it's, there's tons of mud in that groove I have to go and find a sink for this unfortunately we'll see how far we get There's all sorts in here. I think there's peaches in here, and there's definitely some. Uh, it's nice. Uh, it's nice thick uh, rim tape, though. Right. I think the best thing I can do with that is get a get a toothbrush going in there. See if we can get it all out. Start at the valve and work round. And then once we've got the big chunky stuff out, we'll go and do it again with a bit of cleaning fluid on it, degreaser, engine degreaser. Fortunately it's not it's not gone solid. So this is how you change we've we've ended up going into this is how you put a tubeless tire on now. It's not that bad. One of Jerry's bikes, normally when they come into the workshop they just give a little sigh and fall to pieces on the floor. So Actually, on the grand scheme of things, I've, I've got off lightly this time. Yeah, you can see how much muck and shit there is in there. Don't worry, I'm cleaning it all out. I'll give that a blow out with some pressed air. Right, so that side actually doesn't look that bad now. I think there's just a little bit behind that valve where I can't get, couldn't get the toothbrush into. Good. Cleanest thing in the world. Right. You can see that. So where's the valve gone? Same again, work round from the valve. I'm hoping I don't have to retape it because I don't even know if I've got any. Oh, what's going off there? Interesting. There's another bit like that up here. I didn't see what it was. It's been imagining it. It's almost like a bit of paint. I wonder whether there was actually a leak on the rim there because of the muck. Definitely one side was worse than the other, so I suspect it had, it had come off the rim in the wild on one side. Another one there. Yeah, it's definitely where it's, uh, it's tried to fix a hole. It's getting sticky now. Feel it on my fingers. I'm just looking now, just giving it a quick final inspection, make sure there's nothing on. You can see what it's doing. It's starting to it's starting to dry up and clump, and that's what we want to avoid. Yeah, we need to start getting the. Uh, the new tyres on. Right, so these are the new ones. Direction of travel. That way. Um, oops, they are hooked. Good, we've got the right ones. Tubeless, come on, give me the direction of travel. Torah. I do like the Torah tires. I don't like how much I charge for them now. I much preferred them when I first started buying them and nobody nobody else was interested in the buying because they sold them as cheap. Right, the tire on that way round. Spinny, spinny, spinny. That needs to go. That way round. Come on, don't be awkward. Do 
normally get them on this guy. I'm just being so flipping awkward. Because it's in the it's in the groove. It's in the groove. In the groove. In the groove. Roll it over. Find it with this. Come on. Nearly there. There we go. Right. So we'll do the, the mark approved method, which is the let's uh, let's get it on the rim and blow it up first before we do anything else. Method. Come on, don't be awkward. More time. Come on, you're nearly there. Look at that neck of that hand already taking it off. Come on, don't be awkward. There we go. Right. Brace yourself for some noise. It's up on the rim. Not going to hold it, Greg. So, what we need to do now is take the core out and put some fluid in. So if you've got it right and you've got the right amount of rim tape on and it's a nice well behaved wheel it shouldn't drop off the uh, it shouldn't drop off the bead now just be really careful
got this stuff all over my hands. Uh, right, how much do we put in for a BMX 700C? 29, 140 mil. So 29. What have we got here? It is a 700C. 80 to 100. Thick and gloopy, that one. Need to gently feed it, or, or we end up actually blocking up the hole at the bottom of the. There we go. This is the annoying thing because it's actually quite a small hole in the syringe at the bottom. What, what usually ends up happening is it, it actually starts to block up the syringe. I can see it there. And you just have to really hope for the best that you can get it back out again. Nope, that one's decided it's not going to play ball. Get all of them out of the way. If we can suck it back, or at least unblock it. It's usually there at the bottom of there. Actually, it could be that one. Please don't block up again. If you get it so far down, you can keep sucking it back though. Don't block it. No, it's not playing ball this time. Where have we blocked up this time? We've blocked up on there again. There we go. I'll try feeding it through here and get it all over. Uh, you're supposed to use this tube first to make it easy. So maybe once you get it going through there, it lines all the bits up. Yeah, that just seems to be a little bit better. Oh no, we've blocked up again. Where's the block this time? Missing the end of this one this time. Yep, that one will do. I'm going to find some, I might try some different stuff because this, it seems to be a regular occurrence with this, uh, with this, uh, this 
spin it again. Not say we. Right, get the valve back in. This time we'll pump it up with the floor pump. Bear with me. I'll give it a roll around in a minute. I just want to get some pressure in there before I. Uh, yeah, I know I can go with one. I'm going to be on the of it. Still on the rim, so that's good. We'll take it up to about 60 psi, which is more than you probably ride these at. Take it up to 40. Right. Can't test it because I haven't got my water cannon on me here. That's a big deep gouge. But do you know what? That's the easiest one we've done so far. It looks like it's even, it's on the rim. Boom. Try pattern going in the right direction. Right, we're we going to be so lucky and get the second wheel. Like that as well. <laughs> no chance. That one doesn't even look like a proper valve, that one. Be removable. Be the core. Be the core anyway. It's a bit gummed in. I'm going to tell you what we'll do before we do anything else. No, I need to fix that. It's uh, pathetic. Oh, that's been that's been losing some. It's almost like somebody's silicon. This one. I have heard of rumours of people doing that to these. I suspect this one's been off the rim as well. Then that does look like flipping silicon. That I hope it's not, because that's going to be a pig to get out. Right then, we can get it off the rim. Yep, we've got. That's a lot of clear crap rolling around. Come on, play ball. Of fluid in here. Yes. Come on, you want to come on? Somebody's a mull of this hand now. There we go. Oh, it's as bad as the other one. Possibly worse. I think this is peaking if it's white tip. It's definitely got less uh, less lumps in it, and that one that definitely felt like silicon sealant. I hope it's not. Mm 
in toast, making some horrible noises as well. This is very well. You're still with us, not doing well. Pointed up there to keep the microphone out of the way. I didn't notice, I didn't notice the microphone up there. Yeah, that's horrible. Right, let's, uh, let's get a cleany weeny. Oh god. Could be silicon. Find another brush, that one's uh, mullered. Yeah, definitely not going to be mullered again. I seem to have lost the brush. something with a bit of a stiffer bristle for these bits. But they're awful. Yeah. You have to get a pick on that. Yep. I definitely needed a pick on it. All these bits here. No, I think I'll go around with the pick first and break it all up. Just gently, not gouging into the metal. It's quite tough anodized anyway, so but you've got to get it off. You can't leave that in because that will it definitely kills that flipping silicon. I hope somebody hasn't smeared a bead of silicon around this because that's gonna be an absolute pig to get off. Yeah, look at it, it looks nice. I know some of the stuff when it dries out goes like this, even though somebody commented that um, this stuff doesn't dry out. No, it absolutely does dry out. GCN says it dries out. And I've had a few of these where I've taken them off and they haven't they've not been touched since they were bought and all you've got is just dry fuzz left in the thing. Right, you don't need to see this, I'll be pink. Right. I'm going to try this one a different way this time because it really, really irritated me last time. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it like that. I'll bring it over from the outside. It just makes life easier. I can use the tool better. much better. There's, there's mud in the rim. No, I'm not going to get it out. Right, just make sure that's over the top of the valve and it's on the right side because once you get the tire on that is almost impossible to fix that without taking it back off again. Let's move that one a bit, bit more round. Bring it over. Right. Put that on there. 
can spray water and soapy crap on this to do this. Just going to get to drop in the middle of the bead. Quite easy. There we go. We're in. I'm going to uh, stick black on. No, that doesn't work, does it? Oh no, that's right. We should be able to just uh, so just out of curiosity because these go on so well. I'm just going to see if we can blow it up with this. Doubt it. There's usually can't get enough pressure in to, to bead it. So get it set on the bead. Oh no, we're gonna go. It's gonna pop. Come on. Bit more. <laughs> I like your GCM where they said you'll get two clicks. Yeah, bing 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 bing. Right, I think that's up on the rim. Just refill. Nice. Need to get the air out. I didn't get the air out last time. And this gives you a fighting chance. The, the other thing you can do is just put half as much in the in the syringe. I didn't make, exactly make life easy for myself there. Going for a full syringe. So what you can't do is pull it back then. And what I want to do is stop all the big bits from floating down. It's jammed already. Look at the crap that's come out of that wheel. You can see there's a big chunk of it there. Well, we know it works. I said one thing, it's a pain up the arse to get it in, but it does seal well. There's another chunk there. The trouble is once it bonds together it tends to stay in a clump. That's the whole point of it. They're all funny shapes, they got all winter woven. It's gone again. See there's a big lump there. Oh, come on. Play ball! I almost want to dilute it down a bit more because it's actually got stuck in the syringe side. This ain't one of them. <laughs> yeah, it got stuck both ways, in and out. But we've got it then. This is worse than the other stuff I had. The, the, the last batch of this I had. I don't know whether I've changed the fibres. That's it, we're in. No! Not supposed to do that.
a lot of the restrictions are actually in the hole at the end of the uh, the valve, which is annoying. So everybody thinks it's, it's that, that you need to fix. It's not. It's the hole in the end of the bomb. That's the big problem. That was a bit clogged up, but it looks okay. I think it'll seal. Just wind it in a bit and see, uh, see where we get. But that's not, that's, it's actually, uh, let's just blow it up. Get a bit off this. I can't believe we've actually got this and fixed the hub for bearing tonight. All we've got to do is put the chain back on it. And this one down the road. Give it to 40 again. It's on the rim, so we know we're good. All we need to do is just do the soapy water test when we get back down. I think my soapy water thing is down there. That one seems okay. Test it anyway if we need to do a soapy water test. Right. Right. Look at that. What was a good one? Right. While we're here, we'll quickly sort this one out. Let me just get this tire off, you don't need to. Right, I'll spare you all the fun of games and swearing. I do need to check this rim though because um, I put a new tire in it and it's split. Yeah, this is definitely not a uh, tubeless rim. There's no, there's no lip there. That's not rim tape. Just checking the rims are okay. They look fine. For double wall rims only. High pressure rim tape. Right. Here we go. I do like compact gear. Ones of them. They do sound nice. And I think it's uh, bearing as well. Right. Let's stick a tire in that. On that. In that. Around that. I do have a tire I can give Jerry that I do not need. We can send this one on its way. I don't know what it is, it might be a so one of those nasty uh well they weren't nasty, they're actually quite good value, them Planet X ones. It's got loads of life in it. Might even be a Rubino. It's a folding tyre, whatever it is. Yeah, it is. Rubino. Good tyres, then. So, I'll give her that. She can have that one. So, thing on that side, thing on that side, and there's a ton. We've just got to find an inner tube that's in one piece. It's got a short stem on it because these these are a short stem. Come on, don't be awkward. Oh, that sounds like it's full of freaking Christmas tree. Right. What have we got here? That's a short one. Not got any holes in it. Problem is, I'm, I'm nearly out of the. Uh, I hate to say this, I'm nearly out of inner tubes. These are all the ones I'm going to find. I'm going to have to put a patch on them, and I. Well, I've got some patches in there. I'd just rather not patch the one I'm sending out. But. Oh! <laughs> Couldn't be in a worse place. Okay. 
discard that one. This one has to go in the thicker one. That's no good. Right. Have a quick look in here. We've got in here. Hold on, we might have some in the used bucket. Another one there. Right. Oh, we dropped on lucky there. I think these are okay. All we've got to do is work out we can take them off without damaging the low battery. There we go. Quickly just test this before the battery goes out. And we'll go back down to the house to finish off at 8.35. Perfect. is to try and get the inner tube over the rim so it can't get stuck behind. I think that's this. Yeah. That's what you could think of. Right, get that up then. For the second time, pumping this tire up. The problem with the one it last time, I put a new inner tube in it, and I suspected it was a tubeless tire, but I wasn't, couldn't remember the serial number. I couldn't remember whether, whether the TL or the TE or the TS was the tubeless. We'll stick 80 in it, we'll see how we go with that. Um, but because it, it wasn't meant for the rim, that when you ran it, it was all over the place. It used to be rubbing on the frame. Right, there's actually it's, there's one there where it's not in properly. I might have to go a bit higher to uh, pop it out. I can't remember what these were like. It's just a duck rim, the tires don't just don't sit on it. Oh, that sounded better. Bring it up to maximum pressure now. See if it's popped out. They had something. No, I think that might have gone now. It's gone on that side. Yeah, it's gone on that side too. Brilliant. I think when we look now, it shouldn't. Yeah, that's spot on. So it was, I just wanted a bit more pressure in just to pop it out onto its uh, into the hook. Right then, we'll just send that one on the way as well with it, unless she wants me to replace that. So, uh, see how we go with that. Right, you'll probably, next, next bit, we'll be back down at the other way. Right. 
We are back in the workshop. Um, my phone's not on now. Not that I didn't know if you could hear it anyway. Bob. Interesting. Um, <coughs> uh, let's get the back wheel back on and then we can do the chain. So if you remember we've uh, sorted this in the grungy hobble. Noise of that down there. Sorry, my arm's in the way, but you'll see my armpit up close. Oops, sorry, give you a smack then. Might do that out of the way. Do not need to over tighten these because they ain't going to come undone. Oh, that sounds really kind of lovely. Right, let's get that chain on. Of chain. Can you just look after them for me a minute? No? So you do have to use this. No matter how carefully I try to do this, I always end up with a So I find a split link I didn't see earlier. No, it's that one. Put it on the right way round. Guess what? It works. Always go right into the outside. Some chains do have an arrow on which show you the direction of travel. So I'll work out where the Regular is not anywhere absolutely nowhere near it. That's a bit closer.
we've got that right. Oh, well, there's no, there's no catcher bar on these. It's rather hmm, nifty. All right. Yep. All good. Which ways do these go? These like that. Oh. Well, that's going to go that way. That one needs to be on. That way around. And I saw that one. Needs to be on. That way around. That'd be awkward. Yeah. Oh, stop tapping. Right, let's go put the split on that now. Right. We need to get that out, didn't we? I think it was the. Uh, I've already done it. Oh no, I've done it. Nearly, but not quite. That doesn't need to go. Let's put the cup back on. Jobs are good then. If we turn that one back, we'll get the front wheel on. Here's the skies. Check. I think uh, we'll have to run them for a bit. Can't see there's any issues. We'll see if they're, see if they're still pumped up tomorrow. If they're not, we'll, uh, we'll put it in a soapy water and see where the issue is. But. Let's just give the fluid a chance to do its thing. But even they found this one like a bit of a bag of spenders. Yeah, I think they might need doing at some point as well. There you go. I think we'll uh, we'll call that one a win. So that one, Johnny, can go back. The Campagnolo wheel may or may not be going back. She's got to decide whether she wants uh, a new uh, thing put in on it. Um, and that's about it for that one. So there you go. New chain. New axle bearings in there, so that play's gone. This one is that'll probably need doing within the next year. I suspect that'll need doing within the next year. I'm not sure of that. I think that was okay to be honest. So I mean, you can tell with it as soon as it goes on to the free hub, it's fine. It only makes the noise when it's 
No, that's fine. Cool. There you go. So I can send this one off. Brilliant. Right, like and subscribe. Um, I think that's probably the easiest out of the tubeless tires we've done so far. Let's just... Uh, let's just... <laughs>